Okay, so we just did. We're still regulating blood pressure. That's what we're trying to do. Okay, so we're still regulating blood pressure, and we know that there are three ways to do it, right? No matter how you impact blood pressure, you're going to hit pump, tubes, volume, pump, tubes, volume. Okay, so we just basically talked about the autonomic nervous system and the ways that it can decide to turn on sympathetic or parasympathetic nervous system, chemoreceptors and baroreceptors, but then also tigers and exercise and all that kind of stuff. But now I want to talk about hormonal ways to control blood pressure, but the hormonal ways are still going to adhere to pump tubes volume, right? And just so you know, remember when we talked about hormones a whole bunch of times before, if a hormone has two targets, it's never going to undo what it did at the first target, at the second target. So just before we get into the specifics, if you have a hormone that increases blood pressure, it can do any combination of these three, these three things. It can increase cardiac output because that would increase blood pressure. And then what would it do that would be consistent to the vessels? Constriction or dilation systemically, constriction, okay? And what about volume? Should it have a diuretic effect or an anti-diuretic effect if we are trying to increase pressure, right? So if it did any of these th three things, if it impacted your kidneys and your heart or your vessels and your heart or your vessels and your kidneys, it's never going to undo at the second target what it did at the first target. So here's your tip. Hormones that increase blood pressure may work in one or any combination of these ways. Vasoconstriction, increased pressure, increased cardiac output, or increased blood volume. Hormones that do the opposite, that decrease blood pressure, will do any combination of the opposite three things. Vasodilation, decreased cardiac output, decreased blood volume. But you're never going to undo at one target, at your second target, which you did at the first one. Okay, so we already know most of these, by the way, not all of them, but you know a lot of them. So epinephrine um, is the first hormone that impacts your blood pressure. So let's look at that one. Okay, epinephrine, of course, comes from the adrenal medulla. That's no mystery to you. And it does two things. It causes vasoconstriction at the vessels, most vessels. The net is vasoconstriction. Um, and it also increases cardiac output. And the impact of either or both of those things is what on blood pressure? It increases blood pressure. Okay, how about ADH? ADH um, comes from the posterior pituitary. That's no big mystery. And it does two things. We, are, we learned it before. It um, causes vasoconstriction, which is why it is um, called vasopressin sometimes. Um, and it also increases blood volume because it increases water reabsorption at the kidneys. So basically this one is, the first one was pump and tubes, and this one is tubes and volume. So vasoconstriction and increased blood volume, and that increases blood pressure. Angiotensin 2, you haven't learned yet, but I'll tell you the short version and then we'll learn the long version in just a second. Angiotensin 2 comes from the kidney with an asterisk because really it actually comes from three different places combined. Um, and it actually does um, tubes and then causes the release of aldosterone. So it causes vasoconstriction and then causes the release of aldosterone. And you may or may not remember what aldosterone does, but both of those will increase your blood pressure. And now let's review aldosterone. So aldosterone comes from the adrenal cortex and it increases blood volume by causing sodium and water reabsorption at the kidney. So that one's just volume and that will increase your blood pressure, okay? EPO, um, this is an indirect effect, but it actually does have an effect. E EPO comes from the kidney, erythropoietin, and it increases blood volume just because it makes more red blood cells inside the amount of volume that you have, and that increases your blood pressure. And then the one hormone that decreases your blood pressure is ANP or ANF. And it is released from the heart in response to prolonged atrial wall stretching. And it hits the tubes and the volume because it causes vasodilation, which will drop your blood pressure. And it also decreases your blood volume by making you pee more, allowing sodium and water loss at the kidney. 
and that will decrease your um, blood pressure. So there is a good review um, of um, the factors affecting blood pressure in this interactive activity right here. Boop, doop, doop. Um, blood pressure, um, cardiac output on blood pressure, all of those things. That one's actually really helpful. Okay, a little bit about alcohol, and then we will get to renal control of blood pressure. <coughs> alcohol <clears throat> um, is a diuretic. So small amounts of alcohol actually will decrease your blood pressure. Too much alcohol does the opposite. <coughs> and so it acts as a diuretic, so it hits at the volume. But it also inhibits um, a portion of your medulla oblongata called the vasomotor center, which allows for vasodilation. So it inhibits that from causing vasoconstriction, which allows for vasodilation, which drops your blood pressure that way. Okay, so the next topic is renal control, the other extrinsic control of blood pressure, which is what your kidneys are doing.